Redox signaling is ability of reactive oxygen species to activate signaling pathways and thereby to initiate biological processes inside the cell. So basically, reactive oxygen species can function as signaling molecules that regulate physiological processes inside the cell. The major molecule that is involved in signal transduction is hydrogen peroxide. The mechanism of redox signaling, based on specific feature of hydrogen peroxide molecules, they can oxidize cysteine residues within proteins. Cysteine residues at physiological pH exist as stylate onions. And during redox signaling, hydrogen peroxide molecules can oxidize stylate onions to sulfenic form. And this induces changes in protein structure that alters protein function. Let's say that it's activate protein. Basically, this signal transduction that occurs by reactive oxygen species is what we call redox signaling. But everything that once become activated, at some point must be inactivated. And to inactivate protein, these changes must be reversed, and cysteine residues must be converted to their initial form. So, sulfenic form must be reduced to tilate onion, and this reduction is provided by an enzyme called disulfide reductases. It's tyrodoxin and glutarodoxin. These two enzymes return protein function to its original state. In our case, it's an activated protein. But the problem in redox signaling is that oxidation of tilate onions to sulfenic form can be possible only with small concentration of hydrogen peroxide molecules. Because if oxidative stress occurs, the level of hydrogen peroxide molecules increase, and in this case, Sulfenic form can be oxidized further to sulfenic form or to sulfonic form. And the crucial concept here is that unlike sulfenic modification, sulfenic and sulfonic modifications are irreversible. So, for example, once protein is activated, it remains in activated state and cannot be inactivated. So, such modifications cause permanent protein damage and this totally disrupts normal physiology of the cell. And condition when oxidative stress causes permanent alterations in protein structure and thereby loss of protein function called redox imbalance. So level of reactive oxygen species, particularly of hydrogen peroxide molecules, must be strictly controlled and maintained in very narrow frames. But what determines the level of reactive oxygen species inside the cell? To explain this, recall that there are two major sources of reactive oxygen species inside the cell. Reactive oxygen species can be produced by NOx2 enzyme or by mitochondria, and they both initially produce superoxide molecules. NOx2 enzyme stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate oxidase. This enzyme is located on cellular membrane and it converts oxygen to superoxide. In case of mitochondria, reactive oxygen species are formed during oxidative phosphorylation. So, its mitochondrial outer membrane, its inner membrane, and its intramembrane space. Recall that on mitochondrial inner membrane located electron transport chain that is composed of four protein complexes and coenzyme Q. And also there is fifth complex called ATP synthase that has its own unique function. And the concept is that protein complexes in electron transport chain transport electrons from one complex to another and by this electron flow they produce energy to drive hydrogen proteins from mitochondrial matrix into intramembrane space. This creates hydrogen proton gradient with high hydrogen proton concentration in intramembrane space and lower concentration in mitochondrial matrix. And ATP synthase uses this concentration gradient and by transportation of hydrogen protons by concentration gradient into mitochondrial matrix, it generates energy that is used for ATP synthesis. But when electrons reach complex 4, they must be utilized, and at this moment in mitochondrial matrix we have electrons, free hydrogen molecules that circulate between mitochondrial matrix and intramembrane space, and we have oxygen molecules that are consumed by mitochondria and electrons reduce oxygen with formation of water molecules. But electron transport chain is not perfect, and some electrons can leak out of electron transport chain, and in these situations they reduce oxygen in another fashion. They reduce oxygen with formation of superoxide molecules. So that's how mitochondria generates reactive oxygen species.
and superoxide that is produced by an ox enzyme and by mitochondria is rapidly converted by an enzyme called superoxide dismutase into hydrogen peroxide that serves as signal molecule. And hydrogen peroxide molecules at some point are converted into water molecules. This conversion is provided by three enzymes. It's peroxyredoxins, glutathione peroxidase and catalase. To illustrate this, peroxyredoxin in reduced form reduce hydrogen peroxide and become oxidized with formation of two water molecules. Glutathione peroxidase catalyze reaction where two monomeric glutathione molecules reduce hydrogen peroxide with formation of glutathione disulfide and two water molecules, and catalyze converts two hydrogen peroxide molecules to two water molecules and oxygen. As we already know, the level of hydrogen peroxide molecules must be maintained within strict frames thereby hydrogen peroxide production must be proportional to hydrogen peroxide reduction. And from that standpoint, damage to mitochondria results in increase in mitochondrial superoxide production. Or activation of NOX2 enzyme, for example in case of ischemic reperfusion injury, will increase NOX2 superoxide production. And at some point, reactive oxygen species production will exceed the capacity of antioxidants to reduce superoxide and hydrogen peroxide molecules. And this will cause marked increase in amount of reactive oxygen species inside the cell. And exactly this condition called oxidative stress. As we know, in oxidative stress, very high hydrogen peroxide level disrupts redox signaling. Also, we have to know that hydrogen peroxide in the presence of ferromolecule produce hydroxyl free radical, this reaction called Fenton reaction. And important concept why oxidative stress is so dangerous is that all these reactive oxygen species cause severe intracellular damage, primarily because they cause DNA damage and lipid oxidation. So basically it's the general pathway of reactive oxygen species inside the cell and we see why it's vitally important for the cell to maintain normal level of reactive oxygen species. To explain the importance of redox signaling, let's take for example cellular metabolism. Hydrogen peroxide is required for activation of multiple cellular pathways that control cellular proliferation. It activates hypoxia-inducible factors that regulate angiogenesis, also it activates phosphoinositide 3 kinase pathway that regulates cellular growth. It activates NF-kappa-beta pathway that in normal condition prevents apoptosis, thereby it regulates cellular survival. And also it activates mitogen-activated protein kinase pathway that regulates cellular proliferation. Another example is immune system. Reactive oxygen species stimulate transcription of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and because of that they are necessary for their production. For example, during infection, pathogen-associated molecular patterns as components of bacterial membrane as lipopolysaccharides and damage-associated molecular patterns that are structural components of the cell, this can be DNA molecule or ATP molecule, they both activate surveillance receptors as toll-like receptor or node-like receptor. These receptors subsequently activate NOx enzyme and mitochondrial reactive oxygen species production. This results in increase in reactive oxygen species level. And because reactive oxygen species regulate transcription of pro-inflammatory cytokines as interleukin 1 beta, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interferon beta, increase in reactive oxygen species results in increase in pro-inflammatory cytokines production. Thereby, in case of infection, this provides proper immune response, and in normal condition, normal level of reactive oxygen species maintains normal level of pro-inflammatory cytokines production. But for example, if production of reactive oxygen species is insufficient, it will decrease the magnitude of immune response, so basically it will result in immune suppression state. And in contrast to this, excessive production of reactive oxygen species, especially for a prolonged period of time, will increase pro-inflammatory cytokines production and their concentration in the blood. And this markedly increase immune system activity that subsequently results in increase in risk of autoimmune reactions and thereby it increased risk for autoimmune disorders. So it's the general concept of redox signaling. Thanks for watching, hope it was helpful for you.